This is Sujay Rai Chaudhary. I am a senior data scientist at IBM's AI services division also called <coughs> CBDS cognitive business and decision support. And I will uh, present some of the recent work which we have done over the, the last one year or so uh, with some of our clients. Um, and, and, and this is also an IBM asset. Uh, this work is also part of uh, the ACM commands conference in January where we won the best uh, paper award in the demo track. Uh, first of all, I must acknowledge my team uh, and my, my colleagues uh, without whom this would not have been possible. And I will just take one quick on one of the ways in which we have been, been uh, building out a recommendation system on, on, a, on a chatbot. So, uh, there is a user, sorry, there is a user Priya and uh, she wants a conversation agent. Um, she wants to use a chatbot to, to buy clothes for herself. So, she says that she wants a blouse. Of course, you can write it in more um, uh, descriptive text, but I will just keep it simple. And, and you have the recommendations coming up. So, this is very similar to an implementation that we had done a um, couple of years back and that uh, for a client of ours, a Lotte, uh, although the engine behind was different and um, that won the, for the client the best customer experience award at the World Retail Congress, which is known as the Oscars of Retail. So, basically what we are seeing is that uh, there are two users which I have taken up here and shown and, and seeing that recommendations for them are different. Uh, but, but a fashion product, if you are asked to, to describe any of the products, you would see there is a lot of detail in each of the products and, and how does one, one capture that amount of detail. So, um, again in uh, as we, we heard today morning, we should, we should sort of build up from, from, from different layers of abstraction. So, what is a recommendation system? Very quickly, it recommends users and products based on their and not just their, but on, on purchases. And it is the core of uh, many e-commerce platforms and most famously Netflix and Amazon. Um, Netflix uh, ran a competition a few years back. Um, and uh, just again, there is this confusion on, on how recommendation systems work. Uh, so, advertisement is a mass messaging via a medium that could be either TV, a, a newspaper, etcetera. Campaigns which have been around for around 15, 15 20 years or, or even more um, are where product, where you identify a group of customers who are susceptible uh, and have a high propensity to purchase something, you, you uh, push certain products towards them. Whereas, recommendation systems are personalized. So, the core concept behind the personalization is that uh, if two people with very similar profiles come in and they are basically they fall in the same segment, uh, their recommendations could possibly be different. Um, and the underlying principle of recommendation systems working is that similar people buy similar products. If this principle was not true and there is, it is, there is no, there is no reason, uh, I cannot prove this, this is, this is a lot of work in in social behavioral studies have, 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 have observed this empirically. If this is not true, no recommendation system would work. Uh, traditional recommendation systems, when we look at collaborative filtering based recommendation systems, um, there are two classic collaborative filtering based recommendation systems. And although, um, and, and, and it is still very common using uh, collaborative filtering in recommendation systems in production systems is even today very common. Uh, the user based collaborative filtering is that uh, if there is one user and there is someone who is similar to that user and if, <coughs> if both these product people like, um, like uh, two products A and B, then this user is also likely to, to, to like product C. 
in item based it is it's ba based on two products are similar and if there are users um, who, who like a, a certain set of products, um, then, then another similar product is something that they are likely to like. So, um, so that is that's the, the principle of item based collaborative filtering. Um, now, just I just I do not want to, to scare you with, with the math, but I want to bring out something important here. That when we look at, so this is this is a predicted rating for a certain user i and for a certain product j and what we are doing is we are saying that uh, these are the products which are similar to it under some neighborhood. Uh, and uh, we we take the, the, the known rating right utility uh, that, that I know and this rating could be derived from actual purchases could be derived from their online click stream behavior could be derived from reviews etcetera. So, and I and I take a weighted sum using the product similarity. Now, let us not bother about, about what this equation is. The core part is there is this core thing here on product similarity. We would have to understand that products are similar and the question is what do you mean by two products are similar and this could be in any domain. Um, is it um, how do we compute similarity? Traditionally, we take the product features and we define a similarity metric. It could be a Euclidean metric, it could be um, a, a jacquard similarity, it could be a cosine similarity, but we define a similarity metric on the product features that are available. The question is, um, is that sufficient um, and, um, and, and, and this is not true only for, um, for collaborative filtering that I showed you, other algorithmic techniques like content based filtering, alternating least squares. Um, have under the hood the same concept and even in deep learning models and we keep talking about deep learning models to it today. Here are two of the um, two deep learning models uh, neural collaborative filtering and widened deep learning both of them uh, use some basics of, of, of describing a product by a set of features um, and then doing some computations on top of that. Um, the question is how does one uh, one actually do this. Um, and what I am claiming and from my experience is that um, in most real world data is both incomplete and inadequate, right. So, incomplete we understand, we all, all have seen missing data and, and there are various ways in which you can impute it or ignore it whatever. However, as serious a problem as missing data is, uh, perhaps equally if not most serious is that data is inadequate. Here is a, a screenshot from a very popular online website um, and I am not complaining on, on that website, but, but the two uh, t-shirts on the left are both uh, abstract print. If, if you filter on t-shirt and choose abstract print on the design, these are two shirts that come up. And on the right are two, two, two t-shirts that come up uh, which are uh, checks, right. Uh, so, these are apparently similar, but as each of us understand that, um, that they are in a way very different and, uh, and this information is not captured in your structured data feature. And, and because it is so different, I can also say that perhaps the, the customer who is buying this product and the customer who is buying this product is very different. So, the problem is th and this problem is not unique in retail fashion. Uh, a very important area is where we have seen this is training content. So, when we look at training content, you will have one training content in which uh, in a Coursera course description um, content data science, right. I mean what is data science? Anything and everything can be data science. Uh, there may be a text descriptive text which, which explains the course whether this is an Andrew and G's machine learning course etcetera, but it is not there in the structured feature that is available. It is also present in media and content and photographs paintings of course, a lot. This is not the third is not something I have worked with, but, but yes this is something which where it is very important. So, what we are trying to say is that we should 
look at a multimodal representation. A multimodal representation uh, takes data with different modes of input. Uh, one mode of input is, for example, is a visual input, which may be an image, uh, and a verbal or a text, which may be a structured features. So, there is a multimodal input, and what you do is you build a neural uh, network layers and create a shared representation. This representation is something which, uh, which combines information from different modes of data and the very in, in, in exactly the same way that you would do when you look at the shirt I am wearing, right. You would be not only looking at this is a full sleeve shirt, you would be you would be understanding its pattern, you would be understanding its texture, etcetera. So, there is a lot of inherent um, information which we combine as humans and, and our attempt is can we do this uh, uh, by a, a, a AI system and uh, again a uh, lots of, um, of uh, different modes could be text, descriptive text, images, videos, speech. And what we do here is so an auto encoder and uh, I think most of us here would be aware. Uh, builds a representation, a hidden representation, a latent feature such that uh, I can reconstruct the original from the input. And the way I train our autoencoder model is I try and reduce the reconstruction loss. And, and this is a latent representation. In a multimodal autoencoder, I take the data from different, uh, uh, um, from different modes of input and create a shared representation across the modes, so that I can regenerate each of the modes separately. And the loss that I train it for is a, is a weighted sum of the losses for each of the modes. So, therefore, this representation can rebuild to, to a high level of accuracy each of the modes of the data. I can rebuild the text, I can rebuild the image, etcetera. So, why did we do multimodal in recommendation systems is because uh, our consumer decision making process is also based on, on taking visual cues in addition to textual cues, for example, in the fashion domain, but, but elsewhere. So, it is not one mode of data by which we take a decision. So, therefore, if we have to, to replicate that similar people like similar products, then I should, should consider that similarity being across different modes of input. Um, so, what we do in our in our architecture is um, we, we, we build a, let me look at this diagram. And it, it, so, we have an image and we build an image encoding. Um, what is an image encoding? Think of, uh, of any convolutional neural network uh, like uh, Elinet to a VGD 16, whatever you want and look at the last layer before the softmax that could be an image encoding, right. Um, so, so that is an image encoding or an embedding. Um, for example, uh, here is a, uh, this I think was an inception net embedding if I remember correctly. Uh, and then we, we create a shared representation using the textual data features that I have. Uh, and because it is categorical, it is converted into one hot encoding. So, it is rather large 855. We have a, a, a product shared representation. We have a user shared representation here. We take a dot product of these two, which is basically um, um, the representation of the user and the product in the same um, latent space. And we say we try and match this to the rating. We also have some more additional complexity on trying and ranking the products. So, that if I know that, that uh, for example, Sujoy has liked this shirt. Then similar, sh then when we look at the predicted ratings, they sh the concordance of the predicted ratings should be similar to the similarities of this shirt, right. So, we take all these five different losses, loss 1, um, loss 2, loss, loss 2, loss 3, loss 4 and loss 5. We take a weighted sum, we, le we learn the weights via a, a round of cross validation and we take a weighted sum and we predict the results. And let us look at at some variants of the architecture. Uh, we call model 1 to be text only, we, because I we'll, will present some numbers. We, I, I call model 2 to be uh, a text and uh, image uh, in the product. 
model 3 is the same, but here the text is um, information is uh, enhanced by the image. For example, I have got rid of textual uh, colors like green and blue and replaced them with RGB values. That is one example. I have also fitted some, some um, um, missing network, uh, missing data. And here this is a, here we have a convolutional autoencoder instead of the embedding. So, we try and reconstruct the image. If you look at the performance, first of all, the, the difference with respect to collaborative filtering and, and uh, deep learning models are orders of magnitude difference. So, there is no question that deep learning models would do better. Right? Yes, we have limited it to, to 500 neighboring users, but uh, or 500 neighboring products, but even if you increase it won't, won't change much. So, there is an order of magnitude difference. We see as we go across the models, uh, the fourth model, which is my convolutional autoencoder is doing slightly better, not much, uh, but the point is um, whereas, the third model is, is almost double of the is, is almost working double in both the validation as well as uh, hold out data sets. And why is this, uh, why, so what we have implemented on production is model 3 and not model 4, because training this model is a big pain, because this is very large convolutional autoencoder. And so, this is a big pain in training such a deep model. So, uh, so that is why we have seen that using of, uh, of a model here, where we try and rebuild the image embeddings uh, is, um, is advantageous, uh, both from online prediction as well as training. Again, one thing let me point out that uh, this system has been, been deployed on production and we can get uh, 100 millisecond, under 100 millisecond response by using a bit of fancy engineering, nothing fancy, but, but, but thinking about what happens. If you clearly deeply think about it, on a certain day the products are not going to change, the users are not going to change. If a new user comes up, I cannot do any recommendation. So, this user list is known, the product list is known at the beginning of the day. So, at the beginning of the day during the training, I simply store these two information and online I just need to do a dot product and a dot product as any of you know, even it, it takes few uh, milliseconds. So, we use that and we, we have been able to deploy this. Uh, one of the disadvantages of course, here is for training we would need GPUs. Uh, so, we would need um, uh, a lot of compute power to, to be able to do it well. That is one disadvantage and we have heard this concern from some of our clients. And so, there we have had to use collaborative filtering based approaches. Uh, some further work we are, I am currently we're now working on, uh, this is none of this is the results are available publicly, but we are currently using descriptive text where uh, along with, with any fashion product, you have some uh, design expert writing some text. Uh, about this shirt, pair it with x and y and z. We are trying to use that sort of information. We are looking at content on, on, uh, on training content recommendation using uh, text as well as multimedia streams. So, by text I mean the detailed text you have that this course, for example, I will just take a course which everyone here understands, Andrew Ng's machine learning course, I mean that could be written. This is being delivered by Professor Andrew Endry and is, is the you know, foundational course on machine learning, etcetera. So, you would have a, a, a detailed descriptive text. Um, we, are, we are using that in some training content recommendation for both internal use as well as for some of our clients. We have been looking at advertising and paid content in news media. So, when you are looking at an NDTV site, you see a lot of, um, of other uh, articles coming up and most of it is of very poor quality. And, and this is not a comment on NDTV or any particular site, but the recommendations are, are not are practically useless. Uh, what we are trying to do is we are trying to bring this in uh, into our work and, and build, um, build this sort of, uh, of system. Uh, but this is this is very uh, this is very um, here you actually have three three different components. This is very uh, experimental as of now. We've had some progress here. Uh, and um, so, maybe in a future conference we can do that. 
So, uh, references uh, uh, which I have referred to and I will uh, end and open to questions. Yes. Yes. Yes, but uh, but what you look at for recommendation systems is, is you look at individual past purchases, right? When you look at an advertisement, the individual does not exist, right? So so that is the core difference where you need to have individualized history of purchase and click through and etc. To build a recommendation system. Uh, so, purchase behavior is of course, the other thing we, which we have used a lot is click stream behavior, page views uh, and an add to cart wish list, we have used a lot of that. Uh, so, th so that is another uh, very important source of data, reviews, online reviews etcetera. So, all of this goes into our uh, uh, training for the recommendation system. The inference as I said uh, is under 100 milliseconds. This is for 500,000 uh, for a for a Indian retailer having 505 lakh um, 5 lakh uh, users with uh, 1000 concurrent users during peak time and uh, 35,000 products. I am getting 100 millisecond latency. No. For no no GPS for inference, too expensive. Yes. Yes. This, this is a very interesting problem. Not just holdouts. Said other problem is, uh, how do you even um, how do you prior to, to to deploying it? How do you even know whether it would be good or not? So uh, some of the work that we've done and uh, filing patents on that is basically run simulations uh, of the of the data with different combinations of the input and and seeing whether a similar pro product is coming up in the top end choices or not that would be a smaller intersection yes but but on that intersection we are trying to see when i look at a similarity of the products are they uh, are are we recommending similar products or not Yes. So, this is this is a actually a very deep question, uh, not all of it is actually available now for, for public consumption, we are filing some patents on this, but yes that is we have been looking at this problem, it is a very hard problem to solve in recommendation systems. One second, sorry, okay. yeah, he had asked, he had put his hand. Uh, I mean correct. Yes, yes. I know the individual, right? I, I have the user identified through a login. So, so that is that is assumed. If the user is anonymous, then you cannot do personalization. Yes. So, if you think of an app today, you are always logged in, or you are on Amazon or, or Flipkart, you are always logged in. I mean, that is the reason why they keep you logged in. Okay. Yes, we 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 claim it has it will work for for other industries, but from our we have deployed it into production only in retail. We believe it would, but into production is only in retail. Not groceries, but but fashion consumer goods. Yes, would work. We've deployed it in fashion and consumer goods, uh, electronics. By the consumer goods, I also mean electronics. Yes. Sure. Thank you.